Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to my vlog, Becoming an Ultra Runner, and today marks the one week and six days left until my first ultra marathon of 50k in Exmoor, and I'm so excited, I cannot wait. Just a bit of a refresh, you guys. Um, the last video I was talking about a bit of a hamstring strain. Um, I managed to get over that in about two weeks, do a, a week and a half's worth of decent running, and then I had the Cardiff Half Marathon. So I went into that thinking, I'm just gonna treat this like a long run, and I'll start off at a, a decent pace and just see how I feel if at any point things start to ache. I'll either slow down to a jog or drop out and not risk anything. Uh, the race was absolutely fine. I got to the end, had a massive PB, something like 22 minutes off my old half marathon time. And I felt really good all the way around. Um, so that was great huge amounts of confidence from that, knowing that I can still run that fast. Even after a few weeks off, I hadn't really lost any fitness. I think a lot of that is down to the work I do on the spin bike. Um, I regularly go on it and try and get my heart rate up to that kind of 140 mark and keep it there for a good hour or so. Um, that's really helped. I've been doing stuff in the gym and I've been doing loads of stretching and foam rolling. All of it seems to have helped. I haven't lost too much as far as the running goes, so very happy. Um, frustratingly though, afterwards, I went out to find my wife who was also running the half. She's a little bit slow for me, so I went out to run her in. Um, and then during running her in, I started to feel a little bit of knee pain here along the side of my knee. Um, and that is the same pain that I had all those months ago, back at the start of the year, that led to me being out for ages. So. We ran her in, it wasn't very far. Um, I spent the rest of that afternoon with ice on my knee, and the next day, sitting on from work, I uh, got ice on my knee, and then the next day later I started with loads of stretching. Um, if I, I think I've managed to make that go away, um, because it is now Sunday, so it's been a week since the half marathon, and I'm feeling good. I just went out for the first run since then, I did 5K, and not even a hint of any sort of issues. Going into this race in two weeks, hopefully with a load of confidence, um, but I have to admit, I am really nervous. Um, and that's the biggest thing I wanna talk about today because I started off the start of the year with a plan to do my first ultra in May, and because of that injury I had in early January, that saw me out for a good two months, and then was another month or two of kind of building up from nothing back to where I was, or back to like an okayish distance and performance level, um, I'm re I was really worried that that's going to come back, you know, like that. I then built from there, doing six months up until now. I mean, the race is in two weeks. It will have been pretty much six months since I started running again to get to this point. And with that slight knee pain last week it's made me like oh god the last thing i need now is this to absolutely ruin it so going into the race i mean i'm not nervous about the distance i know i can run the distance i know i can be on my feet for seven eight hours even longer if i need to be i'm not nervous or worried about the weather or the elevation or any of those other things the biggest thing that's worrying me is failure and i imagine that's the same for a lot of you guys that are going into races, particularly races that you put in a lot of effort for, and maybe it's the first time you're doing that distance, so maybe something like a 50k, it could be your first half marathon, your first marathon, or maybe a hundred milers, you know, if you're going into that and you've never done it before, and I put so much effort in, the thought of now coming out and being like, oh, I couldn't do it because, you know, my knee went, or because I, you know, I, I fell and my hip, or all these, all these things that can happen. That's the biggest worry at the moment. So, try not to let that ruin what's going to be an awesome race. And because I haven't done much running, I haven't got anything to show you guys. But I wanted to talk about the gear that I'm going to take with me for the race. Now, 
As you guys know, I run in Hoka. I absolutely love the Speed Goats. I've got two pairs. Let me get them. Uh, two pairs of Speed Goat 2s, um, both of which are absolutely stinking. So I'm going to give them a bit of a wash first. But both of them have seen quite a few miles. I think both of them are maybe 350, 400 miles. And because of the uh, the way that I run, I overpronate slightly, so I'm getting quite a bit of wear in the back corners. Um, but like the mesh is pretty good, there's no real rips. Um, the plan is I'm going to set out in one of these pairs, um, and then at the halfway point when I meet my wife, she will have the other pair. So if it's been a wet day um, and I'm absolutely soaked, I can change into a nice fresh pair of shoes, continue the second half of the race. Waterproof jacket. So. This is my Salomon waterproof jacket. I absolutely love this, but I'm not sure whether it will hold up for seven or eight hours if it's absolutely torrential rain. Um, it's got all the taped seams as you would expect. It's got a 20K waterproof rating, but sometimes it is good just to change out of it. You definitely sweat in these no matter what they say. Um, so I've got, and I've got a spare jacket. It's not a spare Salomon, but I've got a buff jacket that's also got tape seams and a 20K rating. So that'll be waiting for me at the halfway point. Um, right, poles. So I have a pair of Leckie Micro Trail Pros. They come with uh, the gloves. So I put the glove on. So you have a glove on your hand with a little hoop here. That clips in, so when you're running you don't have to hold the pole, so you're less likely to drop it. I found them really, really helpful. It helps me so much getting up the hills um, and some really steep descents as well. Next is the bag. I have a Salomon, actually what model is this? I have a Salomon Advanced Skin 3 12 litre. So I think this is probably coming up to two years old now. Um, it's seen better days, but um, it's still holding up pretty well. A few little tears in it in places. The thing I love about Salomon vests in particular is it doesn't feel like you're wearing a bag. It feels like you're wearing another layer of clothing on top. So it's really tight. It's like wearing a vest. It doesn't jump around and bob around. So it doesn't really distract you from running. Um, like I said, it's 12 litres, so it holds a lot of stuff. Um, I have the bladder for the back and I also have two bottles for the front. I'm not sure what I'm going to run with yet. So a few other things that I tend to take with me. Uh, squirrel's nut butter. This is an anti-chafe balm thing that you need to rub on areas that chafe. So for me, in the arch of my foot and then around my toes, around here with my bag and obviously in kind of the groin area, anywhere that rubs when running, get this stuff on. It's a bit like Vaseline. And yeah, since using that, I haven't had any chafing issues. And deep heat, it's like my favorite thing at the moment. Tend to put it on before I go out for a long run. It helps warm my legs up when you're stepping out into the cold. If you've got any slight niggles, this really does help. Just kind of put that at the back of your mind. I'll probably carry it with me and reapply it at different points because there is nothing like it. If you haven't run with deep heat, I suggest you try it. It is very, very cool. Right guys, so that's it from the Ultra vlog this week. Um, I will definitely be filming the race. I'm really hoping to put together a good video. Um, so hopefully it all goes to plan and I can get a video out very, very soon about that. Um, over the last week or so, I've been working on another race video for a friend of mine, John, who ran the Tenavan Challenge recently. So. I'm probably 80% through it, I'm just trying to work out how to end it properly. Um, so I'm going to show you guys a bit of a clip from that. First two climbs felt smooth, felt nice to be out there. Um, surprisingly colder than I was expecting at the top. I think it was, um, conditions were good, better than initially anticipated. So. It felt good and first two no problems.
right, so thank you so much for watching, guys. If you've enjoyed the video, please like it and leave any comments below you'd like. I would especially like some words of encouragement for the race in two weeks' time. Uh, any last minute bits of advice are really appreciated. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe.